Preston University College. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Our festive specials continue tonight with two more alumni teams here to do battle for the honour of their alma maters. Only the four highest scoring winners of these first round matches progress to the semi finals. So, with three heats played already, tonight's teams know they'll need a score of 165 if they want, for reasons best known to themselves, to play again. The London School of Economics is represented tonight by firstly a lawyer and activist whose most recent book, This Is Why I Resist, has been described as a fearlessly articulate call to anti-racist action. She's established several initiatives promoting female and ethnic minority leadership, and as a solicitor herself, specializes in the financial services industry. On her left is a journalist who began her career as a reporter for the BBC before moving to Channel 4 News in 2012, where she is now one of the main anchors. Her first book was published in 2021 and has been widely praised for its new perspective on British Orientalism. Their captain is a chronicler of popular culture whose dispatches from the new romantic club scene in the 1980s established him as a go-to commentator on the music and fashion of the time. His eponymous show on BBC Radio London is the station's longest running and purports to offer everything you need to know about London. Their final player is a world champion rower who has represented Great Britain since 2012. In addition to his 2016 world championship title, he's also a two-time gold medalist at the European Championships and while a postgraduate at Oxford was part of the crew that won the 2017 boat race. Let's hear the LSE team introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Dr. Shola Mashukbamimu. I graduated from the London School of Economics and Political Science in 2002 with a master's degree in commercial and corporate law. I'm a lawyer, author of This Is Where I Resist, and a political women's rights activist. Hello, I'm Fatima Manji. I graduated in 2007 from the LSE with an undergraduate degree in government and history. I'm now a journalist, broadcaster, and the author of Hidden Heritage. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Robert Elms. I graduated in 1980, studying politics and history, went on to become the nation's ridiculous haircut correspondent and now present a daily radio show to the greatest city on earth. Hi, I'm Ollie Cook. I studied international relations and history at LSE, graduated in 2012 and since then have been rowing for Great Britain, uh, including at the recent Tokyo Olympic Games. Now, they're facing a team of alumni from Hartford College, Oxford, whose first player was introduced to the world of jazz by Wynton Marsalis at the age of 13. He's now a multi-award winning alto saxophonist and rapper and the main presenter of Radio 3's Jazz Now. On his left is a historian specialising in the Queens of England and the Tudor period. She's written biographies of Margaret Beaufort and four of Henry VIII's wives, and lent her expertise to multiple factual programmes, including helping Danny Dyer discover his right royal family tree. Now, their captain began his broadcast career digesting current affairs for children on Newsround. Since then, he's reported for BBC News and Daily Politics and was Brussels correspondent from the start of the Brexit negotiations to June 2021, when he took up his current position. While in Brussels, he created the award-winning podcast Brexitcast and still presents its successor newscast daily. Their final player is a former captain of the Middlesex cricket team who's now a writer and commentator for the Telegraph and Test Match special. She's also a trained lawyer and, in the cricket off-season, investigates financial crime. Let's meet the team from Hartford. My name's Soweto Kinch. I graduated from Hartford College, Oxford in 1999, and I'm a jazz musician, MC, and composer. Hello, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Norton. I studied at Hartford for a master's in European archaeology between 2003 and 2004. I'm now a historian and author, and my most recent book is The Lives of Tudor Women. And this is their captain. 
Hello, I'm Adam Fleming. I studied geography and graduated in 2001. I'm now the BBC's chief political correspondent and present the daily podcast, Newscast. Hello, I'm Isabel Westbury. I studied physiology at Hartford and graduated in 2013. I'm now a sports journalist and financial crime lawyer. OK, let's get on with it then. Here's your first starter for ten. With the name meaning joining or union in Sanskrit, which of the six systems of Indian philosophy is generally described as eightfold and has many different schools, including the Hatha, which puts emphasis on diet, bodily postures and breathing exercises? Hartford Norton. Yoga. Yoga is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on events of 1971. Held at the Melbourne Cricket Ground in place of an abandoned test between England and Australia, a match in early January 1971 is regarded as the first of what now common format? Ashes. That's the only one I know. No, the Ashes didn't start in 1971, it started ages ago. It's been one day cricket, ODI, one day cricket, one day international. That would make yeah. yeah. I'm happy with that, I don't know. One day internationals. That's correct. 1971 saw the birth of which series of books for children later turned into a BBC programme narrated by Arthur Lowe. The author is said to have been inspired when his son asked, at the age of eight, what does a tickle look like? Oh, is it the Mr. Oh, Mr. Man? Mr. Mr. The Mr. Man. Mr. Man, correct, and Little Miss. Which BBC Two music show was broadcast for the first time in 1971? Its presenters have included Richard Williams and Annie Nightingale. No, I think oh, no. that's older. Mm -hmm. Which one? You, top of the Pops, I thought was older. older it's not top. Yeah. Could it be Newsround? Or oh, the Proms? No. Just have a guess with one then. Oh, I'm just going to have to say Top, top of the, the Pops 2. Yeah, top of, the, top of the Pops 2. Why on earth do you no. think it's that? No, it's the old grey whistle test. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Which English city is this? It gives its name to a Christmas carol that begins Luli Lola. <laughs> Hartford Norton. Coventry. Coventry is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on Welsh locations named after biblical places. Identify the place names from the description. Firstly, its name meaning House of Bread in Hebrew a village in Carmarthenshire that shares its name with a town in the Judean hills a little to the south of Jerusalem. Bethlehem. Beth I'm happy with that. Bethlehem. Bethlehem is correct. Secondly, a village south of Carnarfon. It is named after a historic city of Lower Galilee, believed to be the boyhood home of Jesus. Oh, Judea, Nazareth? Nazareth, Nazareth, isn't it? Nazareth. Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Nazareth. Nazareth is correct. And finally, a former slate quarrying village on the edge of Snowdonia. It takes its name from a pool in Jerusalem where, according to John's Gospel, Jesus healed a paralysed man. Oh, gosh. Um, it's, oh, it's where Cat is at Centre 420. Oh, gosh, begins again. Um, um, <sighs> Monmouth? No. no, no, no. Mm. We can just pass. Yeah, pass. pass. We don't know, sorry. It's Bethesda. Ten points for this. 2021 marked the 100th anniversary of the successful isolation by Frederick Banting and Charles Best of which hormone from the pancreas? It is associated with... Alice Richard. Elms. Insulin. Insulin is correct. Well done. <laughs> you get three questions on the actor Michael K. Williams, who died in 2021. Described as a gay gangster who robs only drug dealers, which character did Williams play in the television series The Wire? I need a given name and surname. Did you watch The Wire? Oh, I didn't watch it. Oh, my God, I did. Um, Ollie? No, and... I didn't watch The Wire. Should have done. Just name any character. Name a character. Can't be any character. <laughs> yes, one day. <laughs> Just name any character. Otherwise, we're going to have to pass. Oh, we have to. Okay, pass. We pass. OK, it's Omar Little. From 2010, Williams played the Atlantic City bootlegger Albert White in which TV series produced by Martin Scorsese? Um, I mean, that's not a TV yeah. series. Boardwalk Empire, I think. Boardwalk? Boardwalk? Yeah. Boardwalk Board Empire. Boardwalk Empire. Um, it's Boardwalk. OK, should we go with that? Boardwalk yeah. Empire? 
I don't OK, we're going with Boardwalk Empire. That's correct. Hey, well done. <laughs> And finally, in 2009, Williams played the character Thief in which film adaptation of a novel by Cormac McCarthy? Which year? 2009. All the Pretty Horses? No, it's The Road. Oh. I don't think they've made a film of All the Pretty they Horses, have. have they? Yeah. Wasn't I'm very good. I, I think he's brilliant. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Great writer. OK, so we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a diagram showing the taxonomy of an animal. For ten points, name that animal. A single word answer will suffice. Alice Elms. Pigeon? No. Anyone want to buy some Hartford College? Hartford Norton. An elephant? No, it's a turkey. <laughs> Imagine not knowing that. It's Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, another starter question. What three letters link an interrogative word used in Latin in anticipation of a negative response with the trade union represented by Arthur Scargill during the 1980s? Alice Elms. N-U-M. N-U-M is correct. <laughs> so you'll recall that you saw that taxonomy of the domesticated turkey. Your bonus is a diagram showing the taxonomy of three more foods you might expect to see at a Christmas dinner in Britain. Five points for each food you can identify. A common name is enough in each case. Firstly... Right. It's a plant. Mm. Um, it's a plant. It's got nicotine in it. Uh, <laughs> melon... It's Christmassy. Uh, Brussels sprouts, perhaps? Yes, it's I a think that's a good shout. Yeah, a Brussels sprout. Brussels sprouts. Should we go with Brussels sprouts? Go. Well, you can go with Brussels sprouts if you like, but it's wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's potatoes. Second, it's Brussels sprouts. <laughs> secondly, this fruit. Rhododendron. Yeah. Rhododendron. What can we take from that? Mm. A fruit. Oh. Uh, what fruits do you have at Christmas? Oh, gooseberry. No. What Oranges. You, um, mm. Tangerines. Berries. No, what, what do you, what, what's the ones that's in the sauce with the turkey? Cranberry. Cranberry. Yeah. Cranberry, perhaps. Let's go with that. Mm. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Cranberry. Cranberry is correct. Yay. Well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> and finally. Another plant. Another plant. Um, anything else is jumping out? Um, the second one down looks a bit dodgy. Oh, Italica capit. But rapper napus. It's a brassica. That is a Brussels sprout. Yeah. That is a Brussels sprout. Yes. You're right. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Ten points for this. Believed to have originated in 17th century Nuremberg, what Christmas decoration originally consisted of thin strands of silver? Hung on trees to reflect candles. Elsie Elms. Tinsel. Tinsel is correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on terms that begin with the same three letters. Identify each term from the description. Firstly, in economics, a policy in opposition to free trade. It involves the use of tariffs, subsidies, import quotas, or other restrictions on foreign Action competitors. Is. To stimulate domestic industries. It's got to be protectionism, yeah. hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Protectionism? Yeah. yeah. Protectionism. Well done. In mathematics, equality between two ratios, it describes any relationship that is always in the same ratio, meaning yeah, right. A divided by B is equal to C divided by D. So it starts PRO again. Yeah. Any, anyone do maths? No. <laughs> <laughs> we clearly missed that. <laughs> I'm not sure we can even add up. Um, <laughs> just what what mathematical terms begin with PRO? Mm. Protract. <laughs> protractor. A protractor. <laughs> I had one of them at school. <laughs> could it be a protractor? No, it couldn't. It could be proportionality. Oh. Oh. <laughs> In engineering, the technology by which a force is imparted to change the speed and direction of a vehicle. In aeronautics, this force is typically called thrust. Propulsion. Oh, propulsion. What's OK, velocity. Propulsion. Propulsion. Propulsion would make sense, wouldn't it? Accelerate. Oh. It's got to begin PRO, yeah, so... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, propulsion. Go with that? That's a good bet. Yeah. Yeah. Propulsion. Propulsion is right. Well done. Yay. Ten points for this. I need a two-word term here that names an area of a city. The leading figures of which cultural movement included the artist Aaron Douglas, the singer... Hartford Kinch. The Harlem Renaissance. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Three 
Three questions on cocktails recognised by the International Bartenders <laughs> Association for your bonuses. Made with vodka, triple sec and lime juice, which cocktail has a Japanese name meaning divine wind? It must have a Japanese name. Yeah, that's name. what I was thinking, like, but I can't think of I can't it. So, any Japanese cocktail. Should we move on? Move on, shall we? M move on, please. Sorry. Kamikaze. Oh. And secondly, similar to a kamikaze, but with cranberry juice instead of lime, the name of which cocktail is also an adjective that denotes a worldwide distribution of a species as opposed to an endemic distribution? <laughs> And something <laughs> um, global. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Why can't it just be Negroni? I don't know. I don't know. Should we pass? We, we, pass we don't know that either. That's sorry. a cosmopolitan. Oh, and gosh. finally, <laughs> which rum and pineapple based cocktail is named after a Canadian born actress and co founder of United Artists, born Gladys Louise Smith in 1892? Pina <laughs> Is that her real name? Um, that is the ingredients of a pina colada, is it, isn't it? Yeah. Mary Pick, is it? Is that Mary Pickford? I don't know, it'll be a silent film. Oh, Bloody stuff. Mary or something like that. Yeah. Right. No, it's not Bloody Mary. Yeah. Then pina colada. Is that pina colada? Uh, yeah. Pina cool colada. Yeah, go That's not it. a person's name, is it? Hello, Wait, pina colada. Come on, film film. Okay, pina colada. No, it's Mary Pickford. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to take now a music round. For your music start, you'll hear a psalm setting written for a television series. For 10 points, please name the composer. Hartford Fleming. Is it Vaughan Williams? No. Anyone want to buzz from the LSE? You can hear a little more. LSE in Britain. No, it's Howard Goodall. Right, so music bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this starter question. Fay cops and Paradoxides are examples of which extinct group of arthropods characterised by an exoskeleton and a triply segmented body that superficially resembles a woodlouse? Arthur Norton. Trilobites. Trilobites is correct. So you'll be thrilled to hear that after that uh, music starter, which was Howard Goodall's setting of Psalm 23, or The Lord is My Shepherd for the Vicar of Dibley, your music bonuses are three more tracks, including versions of the 23rd Psalm, this time all performed by popular artists. Give me the name of the act in each case. Firstly... I think that's a good example. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do. Billy Eilish? No, that's Patti Smith. <laughs> Probably set me free. <laughs> Secondly, this folk singer. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not Is that Joni Mitchell? Mm. He makes me <laughs> but putting on like a really sort of. Yeah. It could be. Okay. It could be. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. It's not another cut Joni Mitchell? No, it's not. It's Judy Collins. <laughs> Finally, this group, and the track is taken from an album of 1977. Pink Floyd. Might be, yeah. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. It is. It's sheep. <laughs> All right, another starter question. About 6,300 kilometres in length, what is the longest river in the world flowing entirely through a single country? It flows from the Tibetan Plateau to the East China Sea. LSE Elms, the Yangtze. The Yangtze is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on social welfare, LSE. Also known as the Berkshire Bread Act, what local method of supplementing the wages of poor families was named after the village where it was devised in 1795? Would it be the poor law? Named after the village, though. Uh, yeah, but the, he said it's called the Berkshire Bread Act. Oh. Oh, well, we're, what village? Anyone have ill? 17... Um, I don't 1795. 
a village in Berkshire. Anyone know any villages Newbury. in Berkshire? Um, Newbury. <laughs> the Newbury Law? No, it's the Spinham Land System. Mm. The Poor Law Amendment Act was passed by the government of which Prime Minister in the same decade as the First Reform Act? <sighs> I think Peel 1832. Peel, is Robert Peel, anybody? I think Peel is the what's the reform of the Corn Laws? Yeah, the Corn Laws. Corn Laws. <sighs> I think Peel is a good. Guess. Should we go with Robert yeah. Peel? Well, you'd be wrong. It's Earl Grey. Oh. And finally, ninepence for fourpence was a slogan that accompanied the launch of the National Insurance Scheme introduced by which Chancellor of the Exchequer in 1911? Oh. Who's the Chancellor? Lord George, no. So it's Lloyd George's yeah. government. Yeah, we think, um, so. I think so. Who would be the child? Gold. Uh, <laughs> think of other Liberal MPs in that period. Asquith. Um, Asquith. Was he ever Chancellor? I don't know. Yeah, nothing, sorry. Nothing's coming up. Asquith. No, it was David Lloyd George. Oh! oh. <laughs> points for this. Pity the nation, Lebanon at war, and the great war for civilization, the conquest of the Middle East, are books by ah. which foreign Hartford correspondent? Hartford Fleming. Robert Fisk. Robert Fisk is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on works about science written for a general audience. In each case, name the book from the description. Firstly, a 2003 play by Tom Stoppard described as a country house farce. Its themes include chaos theory, entropy and iterated algorithms. Acadia? No. I don't know. So. Arcadia? Arcadia is correct. Secondly, a 1949 work by the Austrian zoologist Conrad Lorenz, subtitled New Light on Animal Ways. I need a three-word English title that includes the name of a biblical character. Something about Job. <laughs> uh, Son of Adam or something? I don't know. Son of Adam. I don't know. I've never heard Good of one. it. Well, that's three words you might as well. Yeah. We're, we've made it up. Son of Adam? <laughs> no, it's King Solomon's Ring. <laughs> and finally, a memoir by Primo Levi that was first published in 1975, structured around a series of short stories. Its chapter headings include iron, argon and zinc. The, the, uh, the periodic table? Yeah, yeah. It is. The periodic table. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, what is the closest dwarf planet to the Earth? Hartford Norton. Ceres. Ceres is correct. Well done. <laughs> you get three questions on names in the Teletubbies. <laughs> Known by the acronym DIPSY, the Monte Carlo event generator for high-energy particle physics was developed in which university near Malmö in Sweden, one of Northern Europe's oldest? The Hadron Collider. No, not... I don't know. And that's in Switzerland. I don't so. know. Sweden. Sweden. Dipsy. I didn't understand. <laughs> I don't know. So it's an anagram of Dipsy or something. So it's a university. Just a university yeah. in Sweden. We just won the university. Stockholm. 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 Yeah. Stockholm. No, it's Lund. Oh. Secondly, the reduplicating six-letter name of the sleeping giant mountain range of the Hawaiian island of Kauai is similar to that of which conscientious supporting character in the Teletubbies? Um, Nunu. It's the vacuum cleaner. I've got children. Yeah. Nunu. Nunu is correct. <laughs> That's a bit of an excuse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the Po Delta in Italy forms part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site linked with which city closely associated with the Este family? Um, Milan, I think. It's up north, okay. yeah. Milan. Yeah, Milan mm. would be right. Is Milan near this? Oh, it might be mod Delta? Modena. 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 Um, Modena. 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 I think it might be Modena. Modena. No, it's Ferrara. <laughs> right, we're going to take another picture round. For your picture starter, you'll see a notable production of a classic ballet. For ten points, name the ballet. Hartford Westbury. Swan Lake. Swan Lake is correct. <laughs> So we follow on from Matthew Bourne's 1995 production of Swan Lake, which cast men in the original female roles, with picture bonuses showing three more ballets choreographed by Bourne, which put a new spin on classic works. Five points for each you can name. Firstly, this version of a 20th century ballet. Is this casting good against evil? Um, Sleeping Beauty? No. But then there's a... 
young woman is that Romeo and Juliet? Would that be 20th century? Yeah, I guess it's two yeah, sides. The, co- the coffee off is 20th century. Yeah. That's Romeo and Juliet, yeah. yeah. Romeo and Juliet? That's correct. Well done. Secondly, give the title of this production adapted by Born from La Sylphide. What's that? It's got a car in it. Is that because he did one called Carman, didn't he? But is that based on Carmen? Maybe it is. Oh, because it's Carmen. Yeah. 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 Carman? No, it's Highland Fling. <laughs> Good, good and finally, God. this production inspired by a 1948 film. Is that The Red Shoes? I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't know. Yeah. The Red Shoes? The Red Shoes is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which award scheme was launched in 1956 under its first director, Sir John Hunt, with a programme made up of elements based on the principles of Kurt Hahn? Alice Elms, Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke of Edinburgh is award, the D of E award. So you get a set of bonuses now on British birds of prey. Give a common name in each case, please. Okay. Buteo Buteo, a common bird of prey whose call can be mistaken for a cat. It has dark wing edges and a finely barred tail. Anyone an ornithologist? No. Well, I can't. Sounds like a cat. Sounds like a cat? Yeah. Bird of prey, <laughs> cat. Mm. Just say a red kite. I mean, My worst nightmare. Um, I mean, Are we saying red, red kite for a reason? No. <laughs> <laughs> red kite. It's a buzzard, a common oh, buzzard. Okay. Secondly, Milvus Milvus, a bird with reddish brown body, angled wings, and deeply forked tail. It was saved from national extinction by a long running protection program and has recently been reintroduced. I need a common two-word name. Something eagle? Some, two-word name. Reintroduce. Eagles that were reintroduced. Mm. Something head it's eagle. Two, two words. Two oh, words. No. Two words. Did that help? Um, it could be a common something. Oh, yeah. mm. no. It's not very common at all, is it? Yeah. It's disappeared. Uh, osprey? Yeah. That's one word. Yeah. Red osprey. <laughs> <laughs> Brown Oscar. <laughs> Should we go with the red? That's no, not the red kite, is it? That's the only bird we know. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a two word bird we know. Come on, um, a two word bird. Yeah, pe- peregrine falcon. Golden eagle. No, it is a red kite. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Found in Scotland, Hallie Aetus albicilla, the largest UK bird of prey. Adults have a brown body plumage, a paler neck and head, and distinctive tail feathers. Now, this is definitely an eagle, a yeah. Scottish eagle. I mean, Give it a go. Was it how many words? A Can great eagle. Born? Golden eagle. <laughs> no, it's a white-tailed eagle. Oh. It's eagle. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Europa Park, the second most popular European theme park after Disneyland Paris, is in which German town? Its short name spells a common English word for hydrated iron oxide. Hot for Fleming. Rust. Rust is correct, or Rust is, as it's pronounced, yes. Well done. So, at the Dong, LSE have 75 and Hartford College, Oxford, have 130. If no one else gets more than 130 between now and the end of these first-round matches, we'll be seeing you again, Hartford. Okay, Otherwise, back. You, you, you're, you know, you're taking the one-way bus to oblivion. <laughs> oh, no. OK. I hope you can join us next time for another of these heats. But until then, it's goodbye from the London School of Economics. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Hartford College, Oxford. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.